I'm going to read for you in Acts chapter number 1. In Acts chapter 1, verse number 1, the Bible reads, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. So, as the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 is saying, hey, he was seen of Peter, he was seen of the, you know, the brethren, 500 brethren, he was seen of all these people. In the book of Acts, we're being shown here that he was, he showed himself alive by many infallible, he's like, there's no way you can fake this. It's infallible. I mean, he proved that he was alive from the dead beyond any shadow of a doubt. It says, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. You're in John chapter 20. Look at verse number 24. This is the story of, you know, doubting Thomas. If you've heard of doubting Thomas, you don't know what that means. It's, it comes from this story. So after Jesus Christ rose again from the dead, he showed himself unto his disciples. But the first time he showed himself to all of his disciples, Thomas wasn't there. He wasn't present. He wasn't in church that day. And it's important of not missing church, right? You never know what's going to happen. Thomas missed out on something really awesome. Some great understanding, some great knowledge that he just completely missed out on. And it was powerful and you just had to be there at that time. Thankfully, he got another chance to receive that, in, that information and that knowledge. But it was so powerful, he didn't believe it. He couldn't even believe it that, that, you know, everyone's telling him, oh no, Jesus Christ, he rose again from the dead. He's like, I don't believe it. We're going to read that story. Look at verse number 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. And again, as long as I brought up Jehovah's Witnesses, here's another proof that they're, they're incorrect when they say that Jesus died on a torture stake. I don't know if anybody ever heard that before. They say, well, he didn't die on the cross. And again, anyone who's t attacking the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, that is not of God. Amen. That's of the devil. Jesus died on the cross. And that is very clear from Scripture. He was crucified. Cruci the root word of crucifixion is cr it comes from cross. He died on a cross. They say he died on a torture stake, meaning just a, a, a pole that went straight up and down. Just because other people were put to death in a similar matter, you know, back in that time, they say, well, that's how Jesus died. And they would say that his hands were, were over his head like this. But here's how, in this one verse that we just read, proves that that's not true. Because Thomas is saying, I'm not going to believe it unless I see in the hands the print of the nails. So it says, I want to see in his hands where the nails are plural went through well if his hands were over his head like this you only need one nail going through both hands because that's the way they say it happened but if they're spread out you need nails plural one going through each hand which it's plural what he's saying here in the scripture he's saying except i see in his hands plural the print of the nails plural there was multiple nails more than one going through his hands one on each hand and he's saying, I want to see that. I want to see those holes in his hands where he was crucified with. I want to put my finger into the print. He's like, I want to put my finger in that and feel it and thrust my hand into his side. He says, except I see these things, I'm not going to believe. There's a pretty tough case here. Verse number 26, and after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. So now Thomas is with them and Jesus shows up. It says, then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. He's saying, okay, Thomas, you need to see this. He shows up here. Take my hand, Thomas. Can you imagine the way Thomas must have been feeling when Jesus Christ shows up and he's just like, uh, yeah, no, I don't, I, I don't, I don't need to touch that. You know, that. But this is one of those infallible proofs, right? Thomas is saying, hey, I, I need to see this. I need to touch this. I, Jesus says, okay. 
He literally rose from the grave in his body and he's like, here you go. You feel that? Here, put your hand right here. Here's your hand, Thomas. Put it in my side where they pierced me. You feel that? It's real. I rose from the dead. He says, be not faithless, but believing. Verse 28, and Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. And again, if you're talking to a Jehovah's Witness, this is a great passage to show them many truths from. Because this also demonstrates that Jesus Christ is God. Now, you might say, yeah, but this is Thomas saying that Jesus is God. This isn't Jesus saying that he's God. Well, look at how Jesus responds to Thomas when John, Thomas says, my Lord and my God to Jesus Christ because he's just felt the, the holes in his hands. Well, how does Jesus respond? Verse 29, and Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Believed what? My Lord and my God. He said, because you've seen me, you believed. He didn't say, no, no, Thomas, thou shalt have no other gods before the Father. He didn't say that. You should have no other gods before Jehovah. He didn't say that. Because Jesus is God. You cannot believe that Jesus Christ is a prophet, a prophet of God, a good man, one who speaks truth, if he's not God it, and to still receive worship from someone calling him God and to say, hey, you believe because you've seen me. That would not be of God if Jesus wasn't God. Does that make sense? <laughs> Hopefully it does. But that's um, one more just evidence in Scripture just demonstrating, hey, this is how Jesus died. This is, you know, he rose again. He rose in his own body because he still had the holes in the, in the where, they, where they cut him on his side. Like, that was still there. Um, 